Thanks, Emma. You're on, you're in outer space. I know. I don't know how that happened. That just added by itself. I didn't do that. So, but I'll keep it that way. Uh, Kira, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for taking your time to sit with me and talk today about your new documentary, Living with Chucky. I got to ask right off the bat, how long had you wanted to do something like this and how long have you been thinking about it? Oof. <laughs> Um, it started as a short film in film school when I went to FSU. So it wasn't like a, a thought that I had originally had. It was, we had a, a semester on documentaries and my original idea was to do a documentary on growing up with a special effects artist as a parent, because that's an unconventional childhood, but it was a little too broad for a seven minute piece, which was the runtime for my film school. So a specific a uh, facet of my dad's career is obviously Chucky and it uh, holds all the same sentiments of a weird kooky childhood. And uh, it was from doing the short film and realizing what it meant to the Chucky like fan base because the like uh, reception of it was so positive of the familial aspect to it that I was like, okay, I this deserves a feature. This franchise deserves a feature. All these people are so wonderful. Uh, so it was really since then. And that was like, God, too long ago. I've been working on this thing uh, probably like at least five years ago. Yeah. I, I root for the Seminoles in football, just letting you know. So okay. we can be on the same page. <laughs> I, no, I went to a football game for 10 minutes. <laughs> You've been working the short for so long, you know, that it probably takes most of your time. <laughs> One of my favorite parts is when you guys are going through like each different movie, you see yourself like putting the DVD into the player or just letting it go or like, you know, the VHS tape and whatnot. Did you always have the idea to do it that way or did it just come up in like the production process? It, yeah, it came up in editing. I, you know, this is obviously a talking head documentary. You can't really do like recreational footage per se of being on the set of Child's Play. So uh, for the documentary mode, I really was trying to look for visual breathers in the editing process and the benefit of being my own editor and spending an ungodly amount of time on the editing process was like thinking, okay, we need something to transition. And that's where those VHS to DVD uh, ideas came and also the building of the Chucky doll. I think that was an idea I had early on that I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure if I was going to need it. And then as I got my unbearably long rough cut together, I was like, yes, this would make sense to cut to something more interesting that's still Chucky related. So, uh, but the I was really excited about the VHS it's so funny. A lot of people are saying that they liked that. And I, it was, I filmed that all by myself in my parents, you know, basement over COVID and my like one hand is like panning the camera and I'm like trying to grab a DVD and not shake. Um, so that's really funny. But I liked this idea of showing and not telling how long the franchise has been going on. So like a VHS to a Blu-ray is like, the epitome of that I still had the the years of what movie it was just so I could be like we're still in the 90s something like that yeah, it was a good teller of like how the times have changed VHS to VHS to DVD to Blu-ray and all that stuff I was like I ran a blockbuster in a Hollywood video for years so I was like I remember what all these back of these things looked like back then yeah so. <laughs> same same although although a Gen Z I grew up on VHS's so yeah I love when you're interviewing you know Brad and Fiona and the dolls kind of like lurking in the background just like sitting on the couch I didn't notice it at first and then like the second time they came up I'm like oh it's just right there was that yeah. one of your dad's puppets or did you get that or like how did that get there uh that's my dad is very a very kind uh puppeteer and has given dolls to people in the franchise after movies so after seed I think he gave Jennifer her Tiffany doll and then after curse my dad gave Fiona, one of the scarred Chucky dolls, posable dolls. So that's actually Fiona's that was already at her house. And then we just stuck in the background. That's awesome. Did you ever have a thought to include the, the Child's Play remake when you were doing this? Or did you just want to stick with the stuff that your dad and everyone had worked on when going through it? I just wanted to stick with the original because the whole 
theme of the documentary is family. And that movie was an entire uh, offshoot of new people, new crew, new cast, new voice of Chucky. It just had nothing to do with the documentary itself. And also, um, you know, everybody was opposed to it happening at the time, but MGM had the rights to Child's Play. So they, they did a reboot anyhow, even though the franchise was still active, the seventh movie had just come out. They were greenlit for a TV show. It hadn't been written yet, but it was greenlit. And then MGM was like, hey, we're going to reboot it. And they're like, I don't think you know the definition of reboot because it's not dead. <laughs> uh, so it just, it would seem kind of like disrespectful in a sense to tangent and talk about the reboot. Um, I, I guess I could have mentioned a few sentences in there had somebody talk about it, but it didn't seem necessary. You know, you got like the who's who of the Chucky universe to sit down with you. You know, you had Brad, Fiona, uh, your dad was on there, Jennifer, Billy. Did you ever, did, did you come across people that you wanted to have on it, but you couldn't get them or like the timing just didn't work out? Like to Catherine Hicks, did you reach out to her at all? Or no? Um, I reached out to Kevin Yeager um, and I never got a response back from his email. <laughs> So, um, and uh, obviously Kevin and Catherine are married. So I just figured, you know, I'd start with Kevin and if he was up for it, then of course I could ask his wife, Catherine, but um, it's, a, a, it's a weird line to walk because, you know, it's it, it, not that there's any beef or anything like that, but just it's coming from the place of like, hey, my dad came onto this thing that you, you used to be a part of. And at the time, the Chucky TV series was about to happen. And um, I, I felt like it would be rude. In a, I, I, it was a difficult way to go about it. And also, I didn't have any agents or anybody at the time when I was making this movie. So I didn't have anybody to go through their, like his agent or Catherine's agent. It was just kind of like whoever I could get contact info. But I did get Kevin Yeager's email uh, from an SFX artist friend of ours. And I sent him probably like seven emails. I feel so bad. He's probably <laughs> like, he's so annoying. Either he was like, she's annoying or he just didn't see them. So I did try to get Kevin. And that's why there are so many um, behind the scenes interviews that he's included on. Cause obviously he needs to be included in the documentary in some capacity. And then I did ask Tom Holland but Tom Holland was like, I don't know what you want from me. I just directed the first movie. And I was like, I want you because you directed the first movie. What are you talking about? Um, so I did ask Tom and he declined. And then unfortunately, uh, at the stage where I was in, where I could be asking people more things, um, John Lafia had passed away. And then um, Debbie Carrington, who I knew more as the, the little person who is stunt Chucky, um, for Curse and Colt, she had also passed away over this time period, so I couldn't get her as well. I'm glad you actually reached out to those people and tried. It's hard to get an answer back from everybody. Yeah, and if it's coming from like a, hey, I'm 22 and a director, like a lot of the times, especially I feel like as a woman, it's not taken seriously. Whereas like if it was coming from like an agent or an agency, people are more likely to respond. But I just was like totally independent film going through my own like way and not everybody's going to reply. I think after people get a chance to see this next week, they're going to rave about it and people are oh. going to regret not showing up in it. Cause I thought it was incredible. So. Oh, thank you. I'll be like, Kevin, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I asked you. Yeah. And I guess, uh, and I, I did it really think to reach out to Chris Sarandon just because I couldn't get a lot of other people from the um, first first film and also uh I didn't have his phone his his contact info you know growing up in like the 80s and 90s there's so many movies like you know horror series like you know Friday the 13th and Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street did you ever have an idea if this is success to maybe you know branch out and do like individual ones on horror series and stuff like that like directing documentaries I think it would be an incredible idea I think you'd be great at it oh like do do more documentaries on other yeah you know, no, don't Freddie and Jason have their own thing? You could pitch your spin on it, though. Yes, my spin. <laughs> I don't have a personal twist on those <laughs> as much, though. But, yeah, that'd be interesting. Also, I think one of them is, like, six hours long. Um, 
usually I start to lose interest at like the two hour mark, but it's like, once you get to like, it, like the first de- like hour of a documentary is so insightful. And I feel like the last half hour is kind of drags a little bit for me, but not yours. Yours is fine. I'm not saying that. Yeah, that was my, <laughs> that was my goal. I was like, this has to be two hours or under. I'm not going to do a six. It could have easily with all the stories I had been like a six hour thing, but I was like, I'm not doing that. Is, is Brad really scary in person? I mean, just because like, Chucky scared me when I was a kid, but he scared me in Mississippi Burning. Like he scared the hell out of me playing that character. So I was just like, <laughs> are you ever just like, I'm a little afraid right now? <laughs> Not afraid, but um, honestly intimidated a little bit. He's He was so kind first and foremost, but when like one of my favorite books is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and he's, you know, he plays my favorite character in that film. And like, just somebody who's one of those older Hollywood actors, like in terms of the way that they went to school was very different than how I think acting is taught today. It's the more professional, not professional, but um, it's just an older way of going through the acting process. And so you can tell like him talking about some stories as an actor, I was like, oh my God, this is all like really intense. (laughs) And uh, like, you're really legit. And uh I am intimidated to be sitting five feet across from you, but uh, he was great. Uh, great. Carol, last question I have for you before I let you go is, I know you're premiering this movie next week on the 4th. How excited are you for people to finally see the whole thing? I'm very excited. (laughs) It's weird because I've been with this movie for so long. So I'm like, (laughs) I don't know if my mindset's going to change much. Probably it's just that you know, I'll start hearing more reviews online and get scared (laughs) or, or be very excited. Who knows? But I am excited for all the people who have been hearing about it and wanting to watch it, finally having the opportunity to, and, uh, it to be reaching a wider audience is so cool. I had so many, um, hoops and obstacles to jump through in the course of making this film that at one point I, cried thinking this was just going to sit on a hard drive on a shelf in my closet because like it wasn't even going to be able to play at film festivals and like to be here and now people can watch it next week at their own house is crazy i'll tell you i was watching like the last five minutes last night my son who's two was sitting with me and it was like you guys were just going over everything and he's looking i was like that's chucky and he's just laughing i was like you laughing at this thing terrified me for years as a child you think it's hilarious it's like you have to go through it the same way we did <laughs> i was like i was afraid if i turned the lights off he was just gonna chase me up the stairs you think it's funny okay well, i'll get back at you somehow yeah but uh kira thanks for thanks for spending some time with me and talking about your movie uh living with chucky it's gonna prepare next week uh april 4th i loved it i hope everybody loves it and i hope i get to see you do more things in the future ah thank you so much thank you for your time today and good luck